Yeah. <laughs> Good evening well, yet again. Um, obviously, I'm sitting in for Mark because of his COVID situation. Um, and obviously, as always, the first order of business is to see if there are anybody in the public here who wants to speak. And I can't see anybody. So, may we move to item one, which is apologies for absence. Mark, Councillor Cole. Indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, item two, declarations of interest. Just the normal declarations, yeah, Chairman, yeah. Um, on the loan applications, so I won't comment on Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> item three, to receive the minutes of the planning committee meeting held on the 14th of February this year to be put before the full council. Um, I assume that I can offer that uh, on behalf of Councillor Carl, who would normally put it on, and I assume that will be acceptable to the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just for a technical point, you do sign the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, yes, I've, I've, I've got the contact in the folder. Okay, in number four, this is Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan and Ailes of, Ailes, Ailes of Aylesbury Plan, Buckinghamshire Local Plan, uh, 4.1 is to receive and discuss the notes from the Neighbourhood Plan Group meeting held on Friday the 25th of February this year. Um, and there is a recommendation here that the Planning Committee agree that the Town Clerk may hold informal discussions with Buckinghamshire Council officers to clarify options for working together in developing the Neighbourhood Plan and Buckingham Design Code alongside the upcoming Buckinghamshire Plan and Buckinghamshire Design Code. So, how are you tonight? Yeah. Everybody happy with that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I just a couple of brief updates. Uh, one is said I did have a really positive, friendly meeting with the new Labour Development, you know, Labour Development Plan Office at Buckinghamshire Council last week. Um, it was really keen to be supportive. Uh, there were quite a few parishes taking forward the new Labour Plan at the moment, talking through the process of refreshing plans, talking through funding options that are available, some of which are some of which aren't at the moment. Um, and also just to kind of slightly add to the minutes for those of you who weren't at the meeting, the, the real highlight with our work on April planning is that Sheen has not been well, so things have been quite delayed and when it's kind of slightly difficult situation at the moment, we're about to go ahead, we're about to give you a really good timeline and so we're waiting for Sheen to hopefully be back within a month or so, but until, but we kind of decided to, for me to do what I can in the interim, but we are a bit of a bit of a hate and we'll take a view again at the next meeting, which will be in about five weeks time. So at that point, either Sheena will be back or we'll have to come up with a plan B. But obviously it's difficult to have a plan B when somebody's halfway home. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Stafford. Clearly there's a been at the meeting, I support the proposal. Um, and I, I think also, will there be an informal um, conversation um, with the chair resources about those issues so that we, she, she's fully aware of what it is because there is going to have to be a decision which we all want Sheena back if she's going to be unwell for longer. Um, I'm sure that will take place. Councillor so Warren. Um, obviously, I couldn't make the meeting, but generally it seems to cover the sort of topics I would have expected it to cover. But in section four, the revised scope of review, um, I would, would have suggested, and it might be something to consider, the um, it's not just sewage capacity, but I think there's a whole water or blue infrastructure piece that the neighbor plan could have quite an important role to play, particularly given the recent publication of the section 19 report for the Buckingham floods. Mm -hmm. So, it's not, it's not just sewage capacity, but I think there is opportunity for the whole river corridor yeah. and, and flood piece that could be included with that or as an additional item. But I think there are some interesting opportunities that, that could open up. If you think about the A422 Western Bypass, extension of the Linear Park, the, the um, potential for reprofiling and providing flood capacity before the river hits the town. Um, so there's lots of things that the Nature Plan could consider as part of the placemaking at that end of town. Um, and then on, Design codes. Um, there was a 
I can't remember the exact wording, but one of my first meetings last year was raising some concerns about the design code. And I saw the, the refreshed one last week, which didn't seem to change an awful lot. It still had some very restrictive things in there, which I don't think are necessarily deliverable. You know, some of the distances for gardens, for example, are just, you know, my garden isn't that big. And I'm quite happy to live where I live. Um, so I think we're actually creating a problem with affordable and some of the codes that are in the draft at the moment. Okay. Um, it's quite, it's a, you know, minimum garden size, distances between walls and stuff. You wouldn't build anything like Poundbury or any other award-winning new town extension using those design codes. Um, so I think there's just one of the things I was trying to propose back last year was that there are some areas that just need a bit more thought about what is a Buckingham perspective. What could we, you know, a town centre design code is going to be very different to a Western expansion design code. And I don't think the way the current design code is structured allows for nuance. Would there be an opportunity for people to comment in some form or semi form way once uh, those design uh, codes are published in the Eastern Journal form? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the meeting was clear that it's a live code which will be revised and changed as it goes through. It's not been adopted anyway by Buckinghamshire Council, so it would become so we can. Considering developing it will be part of the neighbourhood plan process. So it's very there's a lot of opportunity yet to add to it or to change it. So it was kind of it, it wasn't seen as this is the job done, but it was seen as this is a good start. I mean, there may be elements in the in the bucket of one that are actually superfluous because the new Aylesbury Vale one is, is has got some really good stuff in it. And actually it might be an opportunity to get folks on the really bucking specific issues, which is obviously what it really should be about. That's a Just the the, the uh, it wasn't like a recommendation. It says um, at the bottom of it, it says um, suggestions members view Berryfield's um, section was its agreement. I think it is a good one to view um, in the sense that it achieved pretty much a good uplift of stuff for the community. It, it obviously it was a, it was quite a large development, but I think we need to look at that because it was a sign of what's possible against what we presently are getting and had. So I think we need to look at that and understand what the ramifications of a Berry Fields um, um, development type thing is, and plus what the benefits they had that we haven't, um, without going into detail, because it is mentioned there, but it isn't mentioned as a five or a six, it's just mentioned in um, there. So I think we should make that a six in the sense that we do get some um, sight of it. It's nothing more than a discussion document to actually form some views on when forming the plan. It will it will better give us guidance, but it never made the numbers, though it was mentioned um, afterwards. So I think can we include that as six? So with those, those thoughts in mind, perhaps that could be incorporated. Because it's important we understand it. Absolutely. I mean, it is my understanding, it is a, at the moment a live document that can be referred to and, and, and it's gone through lots and lots of uh, iterations that I've seen and, and each time it's refined and improved and, and perhaps it will never be perfect. It's one of those yeah. that we're always working on it and paying attention. All right. Thank you. It's just that we do have a a professional in our midst yes. who has considerable experience in this field oh, and no. I think we're really um, grateful for that and um, I, I personally would deign to his experience on, on these matters and um, we need to ensure that we um, use that expertise appropriately for our, in our new document. Uh, you're referring to Mr. Newell, yes. Yeah. Um, but in fact, I was referring to Councillor White. I thought you were. Uh, with a point of information, Councillor White's experience as a professional isn't the person who's in the meeting, although I do recognise that Councillor White is a professional in an architect and, and has been a cabinet Absolutely. member, which are slightly different skills, but I was reading it completely different because we had a, 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 a retired um, planning officer in the meeting. Well, we should respect both people's skills in because they have both got professional skills, um, um, which we haven't. But 
a counsellor doesn't actually have professional skills when they're a counsellor, although we, they have professional knowledge that they bring to the table. I think that's the appropriate wording for yeah. that. My, my point was, with, without in any way diminishing um, uh, the professionalism of Council White, that I knew Mr Newell had, had helped with putting some of the design yeah. work together, and some of those iterations were direct, directly from him. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, the more to the feast, the better, yeah. really. It didn't mean to... When it gets to the dirty end of it, we'll need everybody. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> absolutely. So... Um, I think we covered that reasonably well. If I can move on to 4.2, this is to receive a verbal report from the chairman on the article in the Financial Times the 26th of February that the Oxford Cambridge Arc is no longer considered a priority. Now, uh, the chairman, as we've already discussed, isn't here, but he has passed me a copy of it, and with your permission, I will read it. It's not too long. Um, as reported in the Financial Times and other newspapers at the end of February, Michael Grove at Bowen has dropped government plans for the Oxford Cambridge Arc, an economic and housing development which would have followed the East West Expressway. The expressway was scrapped in March 21 after Transport Secretary Shapps decided that its three billion costs would exceed its benefits. The government had already spent 28 million on planning the road. At the time, one million new houses, at least 40,000 of them, thousand of them in North Bath, between Oxford and Cambridge, remained in place. But following the levelling up Secretary Goh's announcement last month, those two have now been abandoned in favour of more housing in the north of England. Buckinghamshire Council pulled out of the ARC consortium, the UK's Silicon Valley, last August, stating that as a new unitary council, it wanted to be responsible for its own economic uh, and housing development futures. The Oxford to Cambridge East West Railway, the old varsity line, remains under construction with an expected 2030 completion, although two parts of that are now in doubt. Eastward towards Cambridge and south towards Aylesbury from Winslow, uh, as neither have been allocated Treasury funding. There are also bridge height issues, which means that the completed line will be using diesel locomotives, not electric, against government green policies. And that's signed by Mark Cole, uh, March the 7th, 22. Councillor Sutchbury. The first we record a thanks of Councillor Cole. Um, there is, seems to be a, a, a will in this country to make announcements through newspapers, not Parliament. Mm. Has this actually been announced through the House of Commons? I, um, they meet so infrequently uh, um, and talk so invariably that it might be um, as it made parliamentary time, because I, I just want to know that it's got actual House of Commons time and it's actually been agreed because that's an important change. Sure. Um, but it just leaves the question, two big questions, that um, the levelling up agenda is at present, could be stated, an aspiration and words, and, and maybe this is part of them putting bones on that policy. Um, but we still will have growth in North Buckinghamshire, which we are in, and we still have growth in Buckinghamshire. That won't take in away the initial challenges of where that growth, whatever the amount of growth it is, is put. Might change the broad numbers in the short term, but he will have to come forward with some other proposal um, because I should imagine areas um, which probably thrive on growth, like Milton Keynes, which actually thrives on growth, um, may be challenged by this economically as they are, uh, um, I think in Milton Keynes, they've got seven people um, for every, um, seven jobs for every person. If only every place could reach those sort of targets for employment. And I think it's employment that we need to increase local employment to agree. And I think we just watch this and hope that um, Mr. Gove um, comes always with more detail about how he's going to deal with the South East because people in the South East still need to work. And people in the southeast still need to 
have affordable accommodation. So it's much. just a, you know, if, if the town clerk knows you've got parliamentary time, that's really, um, I, I do object to the times being used as an alternative to co mm -hmm. House of Commons. Um, if it has been that, so I apologise. I mean, I don't live every day watching the House of Commons. It's it's probably quite tedious, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Councillor White. Um, thanks. So um, I, I covered this on social media a week or two ago. Um, so if you read the white paper for the levelling up agenda, which is quite a chunky tome of, you know, so that sort of thing, um, it is quite interesting. It has had parliamentary time, so like good. Um, it completely is silent on Oxford to Cambridge Arc, which is where everyone is drawing the conclusion that the Oxford to Cambridge Arc has been cancelled. Yes. Um, obviously, it'd be quite nice if, if the Minister and Secretary of State might actually confirm that. But the fact that it's completely silent, given the number of other things that are, are in the white paper, uh, I think you can draw one and one and make two quite easily. Um, which is good news because it means, ideally, that the whole agenda of growth, what that actually means in a Buckinghamshire perspective, is back in our hands. And that we can talk again to our elected councillors in Buckinghamshire Council who will manage the growth agenda, not a quango set up in Whitehall with a Mm. Uh, a random one million target. <laughs> um, so hopefully it is good news. Um, and it, puts, um, it will hopefully mean that the Buckinghamshire plan will gain the importance it should have yes. as our local plan, not just subservient to a regional spatial plan, which is what the Oxcam arc was all about. Um, secondly, I don't think it is wise to conflate East West Rail with Oxcam arc. East West Rail predates the arc by many a year, um, and will and as obviously as we know is is, near, is nearing completion. Uh, we actually had um, the uh, network rail and the uh, East West, you know, whatever the official name is, partnership, whatever they're called, um, at one of our select committee meetings a few weeks ago, um, where the issue of rolling stock was was made. Yes. Uh, that uh, Councillor Cole mentioned in his um, notes there. Um, sadly, uh, the operators have gone for old stock, uh, which is disappointing because it would have been an ideal pilot for one of the new uh, diesel hybrid. Because I think the last thing anyone wants to do would add more cost to the project because it's already an expensive enough project. And electrifying traditionally with all red gantries would not only be extortionate price, but also would be quite a blot on the landscape going across um, uh, green fields. So a diesel hybrid would have been a good solution. And ironically, they, within days of that scrutiny committee, Chiltern Railway were able to announce their diesel hybrid yeah. trains that they're able to use. So quite frustrating that we've missed out on that. The point would be in, <coughs> in that they, they make, make clear that this is a temporary solution while the line is up and running, which is, okay, fair enough, but that temporary could be 10 years, yeah. which is quite frustrating. Um, but I don't think there's much else we can do about it. I think the, Pushing and supporting our colleagues in the south part of the Vale uh, towards Aylesbury and the Aylesbury Spur is probably more important at this point in time rather than rolling stock because the sooner we can get a decision on that, the better because that will really open up Winslow mm -hmm. and north of the county to the south. Thank you very much. Some clarity for you, Ken. The bit with the Cambridge link, um, the whole thing predicates on the varsity line, which is the link to Cambridge and the link of the two universities. I mean, perhaps someone's got more um, feet in it than I have. I, I felt that the Aldersbury link, we, it was talked about in council, and Buckinghamshire Council, the other place, about the importance of that link. I don't think anyone um, argues against it, but the Cambridge bit of it is rather the key to link the two. Um, it, you know, it won us the war, didn't it, really, the varsity line, indirectly. Um, um, so I, I think, could we seek some clarity on those issues rather than talk around something which isn't in the paperwork. And I think Councillor okay. Cole's point on that is very important. Both the Aldersbury link, the other link really make key, because otherwise the interaction between Aldersbury getting to Winslow and people getting from uh, here, if we choose to use the train, hopefully, to get to Aldersbury is, is actually damaged. So if we want people to take alternative routes, the Aldersbury spur becomes environmentally important. Sure. 
I think in, con in conclusion, uh, um, if, if I'm reading it correctly, uh, Councillor Cole had read this in the Financial Times and felt it was worthy of making sure everybody was aware of it and, and consequently mm. that the situation. Yeah. What, what we can actually do in concrete terms this minute, I think, is, is beyond the scope of this meeting today. And, and I, I suggest we move on to the next item now. But thank both our, our colleagues for uh, debating. <coughs> uh, we're now going to go to action reports. That's item five. This, I should say. Thank you, Warren. Yeah. So, has anybody got any points or comments on that? Councillor Stutcher. Just uh, the um, going forward, I think the action report on the street light and Tingit Road, I think we need to return to that once we, we've had the permanent. Um, the actual Buckinghamshire Council's view on the um, limit, speed limit down there, because that becomes more prevalent if that is a negative. Um, the street lighting is what they have legally changed. <coughs> I had a conversation with Councillor, well, now around those issues today, because um, um, there is likely to be imminently a view on that. So we need to be minded to that and then meet, if necessary, to discuss that. Thank you very much. Margaret. Thank you. Just to, to note that the generators at Tesco's have been removed, so that's yeah. good news. Oh, oh sure. where are they gone? Well, the McDonald's ones. The ones at McDonald's, McDonald's, they're gone. Yeah. Oh, where are they oh, gone? So that's good. So they clearly were only a temporary oh. measure, which is good news. So we're not going to have to list them. <laughs> <laughs> the listed building. Oh. I said I have met with the neighbour campus. As I previously mentioned. Yeah. I've had a tick. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll start. Any more, any more on these actions? The, thank you. The only other I was just slightly mystified about the university prayer room. Have we that I know we had a letter from the Vice Chancellor and it says a response was received. Is that from the Vice Chancellor? Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, we yeah. I'm sorry. I'm getting. I think I'm getting muddled. Yes, I've that's seen. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Well, one assumes now we <coughs> go on down into Buckinghamshire Council sausage machine, mm -hmm. and we'll hear about it in due course. Yeah. Or not. Or not. In case no. <laughs> uh, so we're now on to item six, which is the planning applications. Um, it says here for members' information, the next scheduled Buckinghamshire Council North Buckinghamshire Planning Area Committee meetings are on Wednesday, the 9th of March and the 6th of April. Strategic Sites Committee meetings are on the 24th of March and the 21st of April at 2 pm. And so we move on to the first item on the planning applications, which is number nine, St. Rumbon's Lane. I open it up for comments from the floor. Uh, Mrs. Cumming. Not surprisingly, the item is down here quite a lot to say about this. Um, first of all, um, the view is that it's retrospective, technically. It doesn't not say so, but um, we have heard that A, the work has been done. Uh, perhaps not quite completed, but certainly completed to a state where people are living in it. Um, so is it retrospective, which um, is a question to be asked. Um, the size of the accommodation is rather worrying, at 13 points on the square metres for one bed seat. I mean, it's absurd, really. Um, environmental health, we think it should be involved here, because the garbage that resides currently in the open courtyard area or actually alongside the entrance mm. to the open courtyard is disgusting and we can there's evidence that animals are 
rampaging through it. Oh. Um, fire escape. Um, what? What? Um, I mean, <laughs> let them rot. Let the poor things burn in their yeah. bed. Yeah. They've got windows. They've got windows in here. Um, so fire regulations don't seem to be part of it. Parking was also mentioned, although we're not quite sure if this applies to student accommodation in the centre of town. But it does seem that the courtyard is supposed to serve numbers 44 and 44A, as well as 90 and 100. And it could, or it wouldn't. So potentially about 10 cars on the street. And the, the license, we weren't quite clear. The license seems to run out. But it was granted for four, I think, according to Catherine's excellent report. Um, it was granted three. It's so quite clearly in the list, but there are four bedrooms. But there are four bedrooms. And clearly four people have been living there. And if the license was granted for three, and they're now going to be seven, uh, it would beg the question whether that is... <laughs> whether that, it wouldn't have been extended. And so, looking at planning reasons, um, I copied out BE3 from Val, protection of the immunity of residents. Planning permission will not be granted where the proposed development would unreasonably harm any aspect of the immunity of existing residents and would not achieve a satisfactory level of immunity for future residents. So I think that applies in space. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I did just notice in the photograph um, with the yellow door, there's seven buttons on their doorbell. Correct. <clears throat> so they could all be active. We could go and play, um, not down ginger or something, and <laughs> go and test them. But yeah, the rubbish in the photographs, it's uh, especially unnoticed. That, that's bad. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the chairman uh, uh, shouldn't comment too much, but I was a bit concerned that the disabled or um, assisted living access and issues along those lines don't seem to uh, appear very uh, large and uh, within the situation either. And I, I'm not competent to go able to say whether there is a legal requirement that a certain number of dwellings you have to then have a, a disabled uh, facility or not. But um, I'm sure somebody can advise me on that. Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Harvey. <laughs> I mean, I'm asked if my people have remembering my name. I know. <laughs> well, Sorry, John. I, to, to be frank, I think it was John all the time. And I have to change gear a bit when we're all being formed. So, Sorry. my apologies. Um, I, I think we're agreeing that we, this is this is mm. desperate for the development. Mm. It's completely inappropriate to move to the yeah. location. And it's ridiculous and unsafe for the county and probably a quiet hope. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All of that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I agree. Um, I'd be concerned for the well-being of people living in such yeah. um, tight um, accommodation, whether or not it's legal. I mean, I would question whether it's legal to have such small accommodation. The other thing that leapt out to me was a sliding door between the kitchen and the bathroom. And that seems to me to be a food hygiene um, issue as well, because you know that that's just I mean everything is unsatisfactory really and because it is but it's resulting from the fact that the accommodation the proposed accommodation is so tiny to start with so they've got to cut these corners which then will yeah. have all these concerns attached to them so you definitely wouldn't I mean there's I think the mood of the meeting is to oppose this mm -hmm. yes. yeah so formally speaking, we are opposed to yeah. this application. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 yes, I think we do. Yeah. I mean, yes, it's for calling. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you, listening to your concerns. Um, it should, I hope that's what you'll do. I'm happy to um, take that. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. And I work with Catherine on what I'm supposed to say mm -hmm. um, to make it so it reflects the. the Shall uh, we move to number two, which is 71 Morton Road? 
is a two-story rear extension with loft conversion, which is perhaps stretching the term loft conversion just a little bit. That's a hard one. I, I think this might fall into the you've got to be pity. <laughs> <laughs> Um, again, I think this is a bit of a I'd look for advice from the panel clerks whether that could be applied in this case. Um, certainly, be, I worry about the parking spaces. And simply, it's just an inappropriate location mm -hmm. for this sort of development. And how the heck are they going to build it from the first place? Anyway, so that's my point. Yeah, I think we should find that. Oh, we, we agreed with, with that uh, succinct um, analysis by John. Definitely overdevelopment mm -hmm. and uh, contrary to design guidance, such as it is, which is still, I think, has some relevance. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. So, formally speaking, are we opposed to this application? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. So, uh, do you want to put that those and or just oppose? I think, shall we just oppose, or is it the feeling of the meeting we should oppose and attend? Hmm. I mean, for what it's worth, I would oppose, uh, and not stand, that's only my personal opinion. Um, I like to leave the big guns for the bigger ones, like mm. the previous application. Yeah. We definitely want to call that to Yeah, I Yes. yes. Also, for Councillor Harper's information, they have a very big paved area um, facing down the hill to their access. and could easily get four cars in there. I think. Oh, really? Okay. But I mean, they don't, they only need to accommodate three. So there were two cars there and a, quite a lot of space when I went around to vote. Are you suggesting that we can't close up around to the development? Um, oh, no, I, I, I think that the whole extra structure is just too bulky, and I think it is not a loft conversion, per se. Mm. This is an extra story. Mm. Yes. <laughs> it's unfortunate that the height differences uh, are such that um, what might appear reasonable in a, in a sort of house on a level playing field uh, is just as. as Catherine says it's, it's bulky, it's overbearing, and it is certainly um, does no favours to the design of the house as it stands within the street scene. Mm -hmm. So we oppose. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Number three is 10 Fox Club Close, which is an application for a single story rear extension. Does anybody have any? Councillor Harwood. I don't have a problem with this. Oh, no, I mean, it's the time. I think people are building in home offices and the standard footprint of space at home because of what's happened. Sure. The only thing is, it's not a, is it not a flat roof, which we would prefer it not to be, but I, I don't, I personally don't see that as a planning mm -hmm. issue per se. So, Councillor Harvey. Well, I forget the orientation of this, but I would certainly say that we should be saying on all the developments that we have no objections to, we also advise where possible um, to put in solar panels and grey water recycling. Yes. That should be a standard response from everything that we do. And, and pitch would, would look a lot better because they put in some Burke's windows and we just need to see. And they can work around those windows too. So that would be, it's okay, but we would make the following comments, which you just highlighted, I think, that. Mm -hmm. And is it right? Yes. We move on to the tour uh, on Market Hill. Mm. Um, yeah, anybody want to comment on that? How, could you explain it, please? <laughs> <laughs> Are they converting the shop? into the flat, so are they leaving that there and doing something about it? Yes. And, and from the information that Catherine was, was um, intimated, um, it really is a box ticking exercise because there's a changeover from one set of administrative details to another. We've already agreed and been happy with it. And yeah. 
and nothing material has changed. Would that be a fair comment? Okay, so we'll move on to 48 Lime Avenue, which is a first floor side extension above an existing garage stroke utility. I would say the same thing again. Yeah, indeed. The previous one is it's the Southern Times, so what we're going to see a lot more. Mm. Yes. I am okay. That was nice. Mm -hmm. So we're agreed that this is fine. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. With solar panels, the great one. I've taken I've taken your point on board, uh, Councillor Harvey, to the extent that I think we should add that to all appropriate um, comments. <laughs> those comments to everything when we agree or we when we oppose, uh, we, we put that as a standard um, note because it's good. Oh, yes. This next one is uh, Six Kestrel Way, uh, a single story side extension. This is just Badger's estate. Yeah. Does anybody have a chance to try? I get a feeling it's slightly overdevelopment, and I also don't like that they're taking one corner. To the extreme of their boundary, therefore losing the access to the rear, which at the moment they have a couple of gates that they can get through. And I would hesitate to think in the future they may want to gate in their side wall, which they don't have permitted access to get into. So I don't like it as it stands. Uh, the only mitigation on their behalf I would make, to be fair, the garage does have a door in the back and you have access to the garden. So mm -hmm. something they might be using the gates for currently is whipping the bins out on bin day, they could still do that through the garage. But, uh, but apart from that, I, I tend to agree with you. Can you call me? Oh, that's fine. I have no objections. No objections. Thank you. And then we come to Nine Paddington Road, which is a boundary wall, railings, and gates to front elevation, front porch, and existing front door replaced with window. I'm sure, somebody is going to talk about that in some form or another. Yes, uh, uh, Carol. Yes. <laughs> um. We start with the wall, which looks very dangerous to start. It, it, it um, looks to be only one brick thick um, and very wobbly on a very steep verge. Doesn't need to be any foundations to it. So I think it's dangerous next door to the public footway. Um, we wrong bonding for a start for a garden wall, uh, which indicates it will not, it looks like negative. Really great about <laughs> uh, scales like which what we've just experienced. And uh, 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 which bonding you would prefer. Semi <laughs> 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 bond, yes. Um, and it, it is not in keeping with the street scene. There's been a loss of greenery, which actually was one of the characteristics, or is, is still come up, one of the characteristics of adding to the road, is that there's um, Hedging along the front edge of the properties, and that's gone, and it just looks out of place. So okay. dangerous and out of place. Councillor Harvey, I object to it on the basis of poor taste. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks poor, and it really does. Tell us, Karen said, so mm. lucky for the street scene. It, it should be knocked down. It is to be rendered, by the way, to be yeah, a lovely thing. thing. <laughs> but, no, sorry. No, no, I don't screw with you. I'm just, I'm just trying to be fair here. I know. Well, yeah, okay, that's nice of you, but no. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. So it's object on the grounds of street scene, I guess. Street scene. And I don't know whether we can we can also object on uh, our concerns about how well it's been built or you know the material stroke um, construction. I don't know. So 
But if we can't, then we'll go with street scene by itself. It does look as if it might topple. Yeah, that that would be highly. Can we can we, we, we can include the photographs of so yeah. when we yeah. took it to enforcement because the renders are not covered in that for very well. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if um I mean it says in the application form that work started in December. Well it clearly didn't because I photographed it in October. <laughs> 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 It was it was an enforcement vote. It was a neighbour who took a picture from there. Yeah. Fortunately, she was a passenger in the car. Took her went down the hill so that she couldn't be identified. Wow. So um, and sent it to me and said, "Has this got permission?" Gosh. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's to be noted, it's part retrospective, which mm. never pleases us, does it? it no, doesn't. Yeah. Councillor Stashbury. Can, could I suggest that you write a note to the three local members of your concerns? To the three local members of your concerns, in case there's no, not everybody goes down Addington Road for their first choice of route. It's usually a good idea to keep your eyes forward. If you... Exactly, and they may not have seen it. Can I propose you write to them as they may have an interest in it as local Buckinghamshire members? Do that. Um, yeah. and that your concerns then. That's a good way of liaising with them. Yeah. Whether they do anything, it's entirely up to them. But. Rephrase that. Let's do that. Can't you? Yeah. Thank you. And we move to not for consultation, uh, item eight, uh, which is Lido Romeo. I don't think there's anything we can particularly add to that unless somebody wants to. No. And then number nine. Sorry, Councillor Tryon. Yeah, I was muttering to myself. I know, pictures. but I, 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 I tend to hang on your every word. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you boxed me there. Um, number nine is the land at Wagman's Garden. Um, and I think we discussed most of this before anyway. Um, uh, it's not for consultation. If somebody wants to comment, and Councillor Tryon would like to. And this some of the yes for every word yes every syllable I think um, some of this annoys me yeah. because we've told them that this would happen obviously there's some uh, some stuff there um, regeneration around the base and you know a little bit of crowding of course has to take place um, why have we got two dying stroke dead you know just recently yes. Yeah, I know. I, know. I don't think anybody's disagreeing with you. It, it, the silence is a, a degree of frustration that we told you so doesn't really help. Mm -hmm. But does this not get fed back to, you know, why not? Does it get fed back? Read into this a little bit. Put it on the response. They don't necessarily. Bring Especially right. with ATCs, which they're basically just <coughs> yeah. 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 Yes, it is but those are protected trees, but they, they are quite definitely dead and they are very tall. Yes. They're going to do some serious damage to channels close if they fall over. Mm. So if they're protected then, are they not meant to be replaced with the like item then? <laughs> as they're sort of managed? They're part of a group which forms a long hedge along that boundary at the back of Chandos Close. Even more so, then? Um, majority of them are doing very well. The, the, certainly the ones alongside number 20. He, they have them trimmed every three or four years. And they, they look really nice. Um, these two, as I say, are perched on the slope behind we can find two thirds of the way down Chandos Cross and opposite number one, well, number one's garage. And I think that they just haven't enough soil around their roots. Yeah, it sounds like it, doesn't it? Because some places can go completely badly. So, can we not recommend a suitable replacement then? Well, I think the ones next to them will fill the gap quite quickly. Well, you know what cypresses are like. Um, these two, I think, don't know, maybe just that there's a sewer line runs through there or okay. something and they've had their roots disturbed. I don't go poking around. No, no. <laughs> that sort of thing. 
I was challenged as it was. But to produce my idea, to prove it, I had to do it. Really? Yeah. Who knew it? They don't know a doorman. A concierge. <laughs> <laughs> So we move on to item seven, which is planning decisions. Um, my thought here was the ones we oppose have been refused, the ones we were happy with have gone through okay. So all is right with the world, at least on the surface. <laughs> I did write a letter to the plan office chair and thank you for being correct. No, no, on, on the one sarcasm. No, no, it's not sarcasm. It's, it's always good to be polite to people. Yeah. Mario, I'm always polite to people. I'm, I'm sure your intentions are pure and wonderful. They are. It, it could be misinterpreted because not everybody yeah. has yeah. suffered. No, I yeah. no, no, that, that point taken, Chairman. Um, it is something um, best drunk cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll declare an interest as um, I, I am included in one of the stats. Right. Mm -hmm. You are a stat. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a free man. <laughs> so we move on to number eight. Oh, oh, wait, there was a good one there because oh, yes, sorry. the villas. Oh, yes, the villas. Yes, yeah. yes we were forced thing. to yeah. produce a proper flood risk assessment. Sure. Uh, they had to actually accede to the fact he does flood, which I could have proved to them with photographs. <laughs> <laughs> so I place on the first run in and who's got backs on to fire because really knew about the flooding. He had a terrible time. Yes, I did I did it um, deliberately whip over those. I was just smiling and bathed in happiness that we got our own way where we we opposed. Okay, so now on to number eight, uh, which is Buckinghamshire Council matters to receive news from um, Buckinghamshire Council, new documents and other information from Buckinghamshire Council members present. Council stuff. I have had a meeting with um, the developers um, that owes you way. Um, I can't say that it was a joyous occasion, um, but it was an informative occasion. Um, I think I've given, there is a note of the meeting, which I think should, with the chairman's permission, come to a future meeting for discussion with the town clerk, whether that's the appropriate place for it to come, um, because it is, some of it's really useful, some of it's quite incendiary. Um, and um, so I've done that. I've also been um, beavering away following up the um, issues um, of the railway walk. And I am waiting for a response. They said, as from the week, the 7th, that's the day in it. So tomorrow I can email them and say, you haven't responded. But, um, um, but about the legal veracity and the way the section 106 works, both on the railway walk and the area of land, adjacent to it still to be determined whether it becomes town council land which has got the a walk adjacent to the monument um i'm waiting for a response to that because it appears that their interpretation of um it differs to the documentation that previous documentation so i've been working my way through that with some kind help from catherine um to actually get to the point where we needed to be I think then I'm also going to the next cabinet meeting um, to ask the cabinet member to support this um, cycle way, to ask him to bring it forward at some rate of knots, um, anticipating negative thoughts on the, um, the 30 mile an hour limit, which we discussed earlier, so we won't rediscuss that. Um, because if we don't get this cycle way in prompto, that means that the children won't have a safe, any safe route to school. And when all of us work together on the Labour plan and we all work together to get the roundabout in and we all work together to get this development put in, the um, scenic walk and railway walk cycle way was a big part of making that development sustainable. And we need to um, see that. Now, there's three trunks of Section 106 my understanding is it says 
um, that they're triggered on the occupation of the properties, we are still in disagreement. Um, I'm saying it's triggered. I'm saying that they should be building it. I did ask them whether if they couldn't be get around to building it, could the town council build it? The answer was not very, really, not a yes. And um, um, but I'm waiting for a response because it also goes on to this authority's land, which is the railway walk, and we do need to get that constructed. So I'm hoping on the 16th, if we are going to be uh, rebutted on the 30, that that makes it easier for the cabinet member to put his weight behind achieving which all the members of the committee and council back in the site and everyone wanted, which was to get this cycle away for children to go to work. I've also had a, uh, to school I mean, uh, I've also had a um, a meeting um, with with um, enforcement. Um, I think they enjoyed it. Um, um, I did. Um, I don't know whether they did, but it, it was a constructive meeting. At least I got to know some of the officers and um, and start to understand their portal, the way that they want to um, take enforcement through and the logic behind that. Um, I agreed to try it, um, um, which I thought was awfully good of me. Um, but basically, it's to try and feed them in. It, it, it raised more questions about why um, that an elected member would be putting stuff through a public portal, which is a confidential portal, and there wasn't an alternative route to which they hadn't really got an answer, which means I'll carry on um, asking questions um, because it, enforcement clearly is a big issue. And we all know all the issues that we've discussed endlessly that haven't been enforced and the backlog. So my last comment to them was I wish them every success but recognise the, the big hill they've got to climb to get everything back into kilter. But there are elements to do with planning. Um, I am aware that the, um, which is related to the Section 106 agreement we discussed earlier, that um, I did get through correspondence, which I shared with the chair and the mayor um, and the vice chair, that the legal reasons why the Section 106 failed we discussed it earlier in the meeting and I was interested to listen to all the views on it um, but I think with um, the guidance of the chair and the and the um, town clerk I think that legal reason needs to be put into for discussion here because we do discuss section 106 is how they play out and we may learn something from the officer's response I don't think there's any um any problem with that and um, that's what I've been sort of working my way through in planning issues and um, and the health will meet at um, at the end of this um, middle of this end this month I think on the 24th um, which is again why I was keen tonight that we wrote to all parties because I want to pick up the concerns around development contributions uh, within the health and scrutiny committee which I'm um, presently serve on um, and because if we don't get that right if we don't get that balance right and the um, and the whatever name they call themselves Bob whatever they call themselves in the future um, don't start taking contributions everyone's going to be worse off in, in our community and we mustn't just focus on the doctor's surgery as important as that is there is all the other issues to do with um, the wind out of the um, in South Bucks, they've got hubs which do stuff and there'll be a hub coming to Buckingham. And it's important that you're consulted on that because it may be structural work doing, maybe changes to the hospital um, and the way they deliver services in the hospital. So there's a lot of stuff coming forward. I'm doing what I can to um, be on it, um, tend to do it late at night. As anyone who receives an email from me, it could be anywhere between one or two o'clock in the morning. Um, and it might be three o'clock in the morning, but um, I tend to function best at those hours and um, or think I do anyway. And um, anyone who's read my email probably says I don't, but, um, but I've been quite busy. So I hope that's, uh, that's you, useful. Thank you. Thank you. If we can move on to item nine, which is uh, count Buckinghamshire Council committee meetings. 9.1 is the North Bucks Area Planning Committee is cancelled, the 9th of February 1 that is, 
a 9.2 strategic sites committee on the 24th of February, there were no backing of applications and 9.3 is void. Um, moving on to 10, enforcement to report any new breaches. Does anybody have anything? No. Okay, number 11, uh, application to fell trees. This is postponed to April. Um, and as it also is item 12, the section 106 course of the update also postponed to the April standalone meeting. Um, number 13, to receive the statistics for 2021, the planning stats. And I would like to say to Catherine, what a, a super job she has in providing lots of information which I'm, I'm confident that we'll all be using as time goes by as, goes by as a valuable uh, reference document uh, which we can dip in and out as appropriate and we'd be a lot poorer for the lack of it. So thank you very much Catherine. Yeah, I would just draw attention to the uh, meetings cancelled that council trials for last month that's now included at the that's not been, not been done before. So. There we are. Yeah, salami says. Council of staff group. It might not be the appropriate time to raise it, but it is relevant. Um, at the last <laughs> planning meeting, um, we discussed um, the motion that went through council, and it was agreed that we'd bring it back to this committee by the chairman. If you go and watch the webcast, that's what it says. Um, it didn't make the agenda. Is there some reason why it never made the agenda? Was it an oversight? We felt that we'd bring it back to planning. Um, it was a motion about um, which got rather um, over discussed and complicated in council, which was to make Buckingham the year of the tree. And we felt that we'd yeah. bring it back to here and it never made the agenda. Um, is it number 11? But I must have been out on a wander. Um, um, right. After applications. Uh, the, the, the agreement has been that when we've got meet other meetings on the same night, the rollover lists are not bothered with. Um, it's, it's, okay, it's, so that's fine. So it'll come to the next meeting, that's fine. It's, it's, that's it's okay. It's just that my mind just remember most things eventually. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to, oh, I beg your pardon, uh, Councillor Harvey. Yeah, thank you very much for all the documentation and figures and so on, Catherine. But I don't quite get the 10 year comparison of the last two columns. So I've been sitting here pondering on it and I still don't get it. So, my apologies. Can you unpack what those percentages mean? So, we take 2019, we have number of objections 83, and then 83 is 1%. Give 1% of what? If we said no objections, they approved 81% of those. Right. Okay. Now, if we had 100%, then we'd have a total hit rate that we always got what we wanted, but we don't. Right. Okay. So, does that mean our hit rate is going down then in the last 10 years? Because that doesn't, that feels counterintuitive. Because it was 96%, 94%, 89%. In 13, 14, 15. It, it's not a true comparison because there are varying proportions each year of double applications so that you've got an ALB and you've got an APP and they're the same thing. Well, of course, if one's refused, the other's refused. So it skews the numbers. I do them on the total because, to be honest, backing about with the two ones is <laughs> a step too far. It'll take me long enough to do this as it is. Um, but if you can't get a true percentage and they don't total 100 because there's withdrawals, there's duplicate applications, there's applications that somebody has tittled with the plans from a withdrawal and brought them back again. Mm. And it all throws it all out. But it does, sorry. I mean, we're, we're still winning. I was going to say, it does appear that in the last three years, Looking at 36, 19, 38, which is on average lower, not lower than it was the previous years. You also will notice that there are quite a lot of 200, 
that 2019 application, so that's not been decided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that gives you a gap in figures as well. But our hit rate is improving, looking at this. Mm -hmm. That's where I get that. It certainly is on the refusals. That's what I think. That's the thing that matters in the mm -hmm. Certainly, the empirical evidence in the last few months would suggest that we're, mm -hmm. we're doing passably well. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on then to matters to report. Uh, any damage, superfluous and redundant signage in the town, access issues, or any other urgent matters? Councillor Gailey. Thank you. They're not permanent things, but for instance, um, I hope it was okay that we removed um, a food fair notice this morning from the finger posts outside the chamber in order to take the photo without having the food fair that's already gone still in it. I haven't looked to see whether other uh, this council's notices are around. But the other thing that has been annoying me for several weeks now is that a lot of the bus stops have still got diversion notices on due to the Christmas parade. Um, and those haven't been removed. I know that's not our responsibility. And I, it also <laughs> frustrates me because some while ago, I decided that I ought to carry a pen knife with me so that I can remove You're them. not allowed. I keep forgetting. Pen knife is not going to me, you can't. Pen knife is not going to me. Mary's carried an offensive <laughs> weapon. Um, we don't really want to be visiting you um, as an ex-parole officer um, um, uh, for a charge for offensive weapon, Madam Mayor. Um, um, much better to get your husband to carry it for you. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I think it can come under this item. I'm really disappointed with how the building work around the new care home seems to have just taken over this area yeah. and leaving lots of mud yeah. and debris mm -hmm. and dangerous vehicles driving around. I'm sorry, I just don't understand why it's so bad as it is. I appreciate they're finishing off, but they haven't even put down any kind of surface yet. Why are they suddenly exporting so much of their works onto the public highway and the, and the public car park? I just think it's shocking. I think it doesn't help. I, I, I entirely agree with you, but I don't think it helps that there are, in fact, effectively two building sites mm. adjacent. and. And uh, they're, they're playing a, a bit of tag and jumping around with their vehicles at times to accommodate things. But I don't disagree with you, you're the main thrust of your point. I, I just think it's, you know, you know, I walk over that bridge on a regular basis. Yeah. And I think I have to wait for the mud. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what I would like is maybe for the town clerk just to write to the and <laughs> say, look, the least you can do yeah. at the end of the working day is spray it down. So it's reasonably clear. You know, I appreciate you in the day when they've got stuff to do. I appreciate, but at the end of the day, spray it. Get rid of that yes, stuff. I mean, the, 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 they left, the left it for the weekend. It's absolutely good. appalling. And they haven't even got a broom. You know, it's... It's just... It's, it's, it's I, discourteous I, to the town. I, I did have a problem with the site up Morton Road where the road was demolished. And I sent the, the details and the photographs mm -hmm. down to Aylesbury. And it came back that keeping the wheels washed and the road clean is an informative, not a planning mm -hmm. condition, yeah. unless you've got a construction management plan. Councillor Stutchman. If I'm not what Councillor Harvey said and what the Mayor said, there should have been a site construction plan for that development and normally it does wheel washing mm. won't be the only development that they've agreed mm. i've got another development in a parish we had no restrictions whatsoever on site plan and that's been quite problematic it might be just looking because if they have got a condition about wheel washing sweeping in it that is a case to, which can be enforced mm. so council half is right to raise it if it's if it isn't put in there this is another thing that we need to actually make sure when we determine applications that we ask for such yeah. conditions to be put in because it doesn't seem to follow council harvey that it always happens no. i've got a development in a parish where it doesn't happen and on the other issue which madam mayor raised about um and, and, and presuming wrongly we could just carry a pen up could we investigate whether we could councillor smith you, and, and, and counts to try. You have to have some lovely tools, some snippers, which which they used to take round in their pockets, which would answer 
what the mayor wants so that you can you, and you've got them as well um, I, I haven't got them um, uh, but it might be worth that we perhaps um, look at what they are um, and get a couple so that when we councillors are walking around we can actually do what Madam Mayor wants to do which is clip them without being afraid of being arrested for carrying an offensive weapon. I think the clippers are legal and I think it's an important factor. Why perhaps we should you make... You do need training. <laughs> so, no, I, like, it's a serious point, and, yeah. and I'm very sorry to hear that you've tried cutting your finger off, Councillor Troy. Um, um, but I, I mean, perhaps we could just look at some way of, of getting some, because it is, it, we can't expect the staff and the officers to keep rushing out around this stuff, and we see it and complain that it isn't done if we can't actually take it down. And um, I, I was reminded once. But years ago, when I walked up the road carrying a change yeah, yeah, but yeah, not to carry it up the road. It's half past nine, not ten o'clock. That's all right. It's still, oh, still relevant. Sorry, half an hour. All right, okay. I can carry on. So, just so, to say, I'm rather concerned as well. I mean, all of the points that Councillor Harvey mentioned in relation to the care home building, but also they seem to have removed the number of car parking spaces. Mm -hmm. I presume that's because they're tidying it up. But we, you know, we need those car parking spaces. Are they gone just temporarily or have they commandeered that bit of land? And um, also in relation to the other site i mean i walk around everywhere and that was very dangerous they shut the pavement i had to actually go onto the road to get past it and admittedly later on it had been reinstated but they there was no alternative at that point because you can't cross the road at that point well, to go to the other side yeah. okay. so it it was very dangerous and i don't know whether there's anything anything we can do about about that and, and maybe write again, write to the that developer and uh, um, express our concerns about it. Councillor oh, Mike. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, items that uh, Councillor Harvey has already mentioned and uh, Councillor Gately, they, they have taken the, <coughs> but they've also started to put bollards on the opposite side where the community centre is to stop cars. Are they legally to, to the town clerk? Are they legally allowed to put just bollards to block that uh, little space that they have the free parking? I presume they've got permission from parking. Who? Highways. Well, that, Highways have they? That, that, that is county land and those are the county parking spaces on the community centre side. Well, I thought they belong to the community centre. No. No. No, but you don't, they're, they're because, not part of the parking aid system. No, yeah, I know that, but I was that it was because they, they, they were never ABC based. Yeah, but because uh, suddenly these uh, bollards with no parking yellow ones appear, and I think, oh, can you just do that just so that you can get a delivery lorry to go in there? I would imagine street licensing. Mm. I mean, uh, if I can come in on. Councillor Gates's point, Councillor Pill actually asked me today about those 14 parking bays along the Evelyn side. And they are not in the, inside the site. They are going to be restored to public use. Yes. I assume that they've been given a license to use them just because the site is so constricted, you can't actually move lorries and stuff around in it, deliveries or, or traffic. And they do appear to be building some sort of retaining wall. Um, can out, can out I can I come in there. here? Cool. Oh. 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 Yes. Sorry. I I I should should um, declare an interest in this, but I can probably give you a little bit of information as to what's actually going on there. Um, obviously, I've not obviously I've not been there today. But yes, there's a retaining wall being built, um, which the concrete was poured on Friday last week um, for that, um, as the base of that. Um, they, they've had to remove um, um, some of the, the um, paved area where the spaces are in order to, to make everything good um, following having having used it all 
um, for storage of materials and, and equipment, etc. It's all it's all a mess. Um, it's a mess inside. It's a mess outside. Um, and um, we've, we're supposed to be um, um, in, a, in a state that we can um, actually start having residents there by the end of the month. So um, um, it's um, hopefully going to happen. Um, but yes, it's, 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 um, it's a difficult situation. There was one day... Um, the the during half term that um, the the care home site had um, water, gas, and electric all turned up one after the other um, with with them um, crossing over, which which made a horrendous um, issue for everybody around there. And also at the same time. The um, care home, the the pub had telecoms and electric there. So there there was at one point there was five different um, external um, contractors or services trying to work on on that bit of road. Basically, um, that's yeah. It's 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 it will get sorted out. I'm sure, um, because at the moment it's it, yeah, I mean, it's a work in progress. I don't know if that clarifies things, but if anybody's got any questions, um, I can do my best to try and not that I'm speaking on behalf of um, Crown Care or the contractors, but as um, um, somebody that's employed by Crown Care, um, I can um, hopefully say something to alleviate um, councillors. Um, um, worries with it. Thank, Thank you, you, Fran. Um, Councillor Harvey. The other one that concerns me greatly is what's going to happen when all the work is done and that entrance is being used by residents and their carers and their relatives and everything else. I mean, at the moment, we've got a major pedestrian crossing there yeah. and about cars coming from one, two, three, four, five mm. directions, um, all going in different places. I think sometimes, given what Councillor Ernst was mentioning earlier on, we do now have the highway code that puts pedestrians and cyclists ahead of car users on the basis of vulnerability. I think we should be writing to Buckinghamshire Council and saying, what's the current plan for how to organise pedestrians crossing that part mm. of the town safely? And are they going to revise it? Because I suspect the plan is not fit for purpose. And we need to find a way in which pedestrians will be able to cross, including me, the current interest, um, safely into the town. Because I mm. fear there is going to be an accident there before we know. I'll disagree with you. That's the stuff. We did agree at a previous meeting, didn't we, that once it was constructed, we were going to look at organising uh, a day of consulting with people with um, and people asking questions about it. I think that what we can't see at the moment is we can see what's going on, but what we can't see is what it will look like when it's completed. Yeah. And I think that's the time to not second guess these things because it may be a lot better or a lot worse so we need to see it in the round but on the upside of it um of the development even though one was a, a completely against it from where it was constructed it looks a lot better than i remember it in the drawings um it, it, at least as um it has got lots of different interesting brickworks and as i sit in the car park waiting to get by I've had quite an opportunity to look at it, and um, and I've stared at it, and I must admit it's got some. Uh, it's it's grown on me in in the way it looks. I'm not saying I approve it, but it is growing on me in the sense it's got very interesting. So I think it looked worse in the design than it does now. So they have done some work on it, and when it is open, my only concern is that that the interaction between those car parking spaces and the residents might be an issue going going forward. But I have noticed that they've got some lovely, because um, while I was sat waiting to get by, I noticed today, they, if you do take up a home in there, John, um, they've got some big high glass doors so we don't fall out. 
Um, um, so they've taken that into consideration. And I was I was conscious about that when I was looking at it. If I ended up in that, at least I won't fall out the window. And, and, I, and it, 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 it's going to be interesting. But we have decided, haven't we, that we're going to do this survey afterwards. So let's not prejudge that with any assumptions. I think we must do it by evidence-based. It's always better. Thank you very much. Councillor Mark. Yes, just one last point. Um, the recycling or charity bins, the green ones, are they going to be where they are at the moment? So we've lost parking space there. Yeah, Opposite the suit. Parking space anyway, because they have to make a vision display for the exit. So mm. they can actually see past the care home and see what's coming to hit them. Um, I don't know what's happening about the recycling bins. I'm not sure that anybody but the people who actually own them get any say in where they're put. There was this mad notion that they put them in Burnley Close Woodland, <laughs> which, we, which, we, which we dismissed. And falling trees. Yes. We, perhaps we can look into that because obviously it is in a state of flux at the moment. And we can maybe just sort of minute it is something to keep an eye on. Yeah. Uh, really following on from Council Statue mm -hmm. saying let's. Wait until the dust and the mud settles, yeah. and then we'll see where we are. And we'll remember to pick these points up again. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. are, there, are there any other matters to report? No. Okay, we'll move on to chairman's items. That's great. There are no. Um, the date of the next meeting is Monday, the 4th of April at 7 pm. And as this is my very first ever chairing of any of the meeting of this sort of thing. Thank you for all being so kind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Well,